Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to install a SMB file server on your fourth generation iPod Touch. This does work on other iOS devices as well. However, again, as in the previous video, I'm going to be showing you on this old device because they are so easy to come by nowadays. So for $20, you can have your own file server on your local network that you can share between all your computers very easily. So I have a freshly restored iPod Touch that I just jailbroke using the Post 6 Pwn jailbreak. I will not be demonstrating jailbreaking in this video, however if you need to jailbreak still, you can watch my other video or in the link in the description. We're going to be installing a few packages via Cydia today. So I'm going to set up Cydia here. And I need to first refresh And we are going to upgrade our essential packages. Alright, so the first package we are going to install is called Samba. And this is a file server for Linux that was ported over to iOS. And click on the one from the Big Boss repository. And it should install all those things as well, which is good. And restart your springboard. So now the file server is installed, as we can see in settings here. Samba right there. But before we go ahead and enable that, we're going to need one more package. So this package is called Insomnia. And what this does is it allows apps and programs to actually connect to the internet uh, even when the device is locked. So in this case, our file server can be accessed at any time as long as it's on the network. And we'll restart the springboard once more. So the last thing we want to do in order to make our file server as practical as possible is go into settings and we're going to want to make our IP address static so that way it does not change on your network so you will always have the same address so go into your there and then push on static and then you're going to want to just copy over all of these settings into static which I will do so once you hit back then it's going to verify the settings and make sure you got them right and then when you go back, if static is selected and Wi-Fi is connected, that means it worked. So now we know the address of the iPod and we know that it will not change as long as it's connected to this router. So go ahead and scroll down here and turn on Samba. And you're going to set a root password for the device and able to connect it from your computer. And then hit change password and that'll save it. And then also go back and go into the Insomnia settings and enable this. So now the file server is active and let's head over to our computers. And for this demo I'm going to be testing transferring a file from my Windows machine to my Mac using the iPod file server. So going over to our computer um, I grabbed a picture right here that we will be transferring to another computer uh, to a Mac via the SMB file server on the iPod Touch. So there is the picture and what you need to do in Windows in order to connect to this SMB file server is simply type in backslash backslash 
and then the IP address of the iPod that you set statically in these settings. In my case, it is dot twelve there. And you'll notice there are four folders that we can see on the iPod. Um, default, these three are read only, which we will not be using for this. So we are going to go into the share folder and transfer our image. And it just copied over to the iPod Touch. So now in order to access the SMB file server on a Mac, you go up to Finder and then Go and push on Connect to Server. And this is what you need to type in, smb colon forward slash forward slash and then the IP address that we saw earlier. So then just push on connect. And then it will ask us for the username and password as well it will on Windows, which I did not show. So our name is going to be root by default and the password is whatever you put inside of the Samba settings, in my case password. So there are our folders, which remember we are going to be using share. So there is that picture, so we can simply open it up, and it is the same picture as on the Windows machine over here. So you can use this to store anything up to the size of your iPod. Um, as you can see, I have a 32 gigabyte iPod, so down there on the bottom it says uh, 29.56 gigabytes available, and that will be according to your size of your iPod. So that's it guys, thanks for watching, and let me know if you want to see any more practical uses.